All right, so we're in section 14.4. I'm just going to write COM for center of mass. All right. So today we're going to talk about, again, we talked about this first semester, planar lamina. So planar lamina just means a very thin sheet, flat sheet of material, some kind of material. So that's what we're, what, what we're talking about. Um, and when we talked about it first, sem first semester, we said our density, mass per unit area, was constant. Here we're going to say our mass per unit area can be variable. So we're going to say rho of x, y is variable mass per unit area. If we have a plane region, so what we're talking about here is, um, I'm going to draw a little picture here. What we're doing is taking this plane region and we're dividing it into little pieces. And I'm going to say the density of that piece rho sub i x i y sub i. So that's the density of that little piece. This is a region R. So we can say the mass of that plane region is going to be the density of that little piece times its area. Well that tells us that the mass m is rho times the area, which in this case is the double integral over our region of rho of x, y, dA. So we're multiplying each little piece of area by its density and summing over the entire region. So to find the mass of the, of the planar lamina, we know the density. Our density can be variable. So we multiply the density times our, our little unit portion of area and sum them up. So it's different interpretation of a double integral. This is on the surface. This is the mass per unit area. And we're going to use this to get to a notion of the moment and the center of mass. All right, so we're good there. So to find the moment, the moments and the center of mass of a plane region, just remember, so I want to go back, and we're going to say uh, our moment is mass times distance from a particular axis. And in first semester, we, we, we came up with a, a way to find moments when we assumed that our, our density was uniform, because we needed to find the, the, the mass. So we, do, we assumed our density was, was uniform. And we made some assumptions about the, the, the center of mass of a little rectangular strip being at the cent the middle of the rectangle, right at the center of the rectangle. So we made those, mo those simplifying assumptions so we could actually set up and do these integrals. Well, here we don't have to assume that, that, uh, that our, our density is constant. We don't have to assume that the, that the mass is at the center of a rectangle. Because what we want to do, what we're going to do is just like we did on the last page for the mass, we're going to divide our region up into little rectangles. So there's R. And here's our little piece of mass. 
And we're going to say that the mass, this is m sub i. m sub i, the mass of that little piece, is rho of x sub i, y sub i, delta a sub i. And delta a sub i is going to be, if we're in rectangular coordinates, it would be delta y, delta x. And we're saying this mass is located at x sub i and y sub i. Well, the moment about the x-axis, is m sub i, y sub i. That's the distance of that little mass from the x-axis. And that's going to be x rho of x sub i comma y sub i delta a sub i times y sub i. And the moment about the y-axis is m sub i x sub i, the distance of that mass from the y-axis. And that's going to be rho of x sub i y sub i delta a sub i x sub i. And what's that? In the first thing for mass, is that delta a sub i or is that? Yeah, this is delta, delta a sub i. Delta. No, in the first one above that, that's oh, that should a, be a or is that yeah. another delta? Mm-hmm. Rho is x sub i, y sub i, we're both, right? Right. Because rho, rho is our density. We multiply that by the area, and that gives us the mass. And what we're going to do is sum these over the region to get our moments. So that's our, that's our, our, our idea here. We just divide our little planar laminar region into little little pieces with a little little increment of area, delta a sub i. Multiply it by a distance from an axis. Multiply it by its density to get its mass and sum those. So I'm going to switch pages. So this is going to be how we find our, our moment for our plan, planar lamina. And I want to give it, we'll talk about several names. The moment, usually we refer to this as the moment. More technically, it is the moment of mass, because we can have the moment of lots of things. You can have a moment of force. You can have a moment of, of uh, inertia. We will talk about moments of inertia. Um, in statistics, the, a lot of the, the, the um, tests that you use are something weighted by its distance from the mean. So those are moments that you're talking about in statistics. Um, First moment of mass is another way you'll hear, hear this referred to. Um, with respect to the x-axis, m sub x is the double integral over our region of y rho of x, y, dA. Moment about the y is the distance from the x-axis. Rho x, y, dA is the mass of that little piece. And we add all those together. The moment about the y-axis, m sub y. Well, the distance from the y-axis is x. So that's rho x, or sorry, the, moment, the double integral of our region of x rho of x y dA. And the center of mass COM is x bar y bar 
is m sub y over the mass comma m sub x over the mass. So to find our, our moments, we're going to use double integrals now. We can let our density be variable. We're not having to assume that the center of mass of a rectangle is at the center of the rectangle. And we can find our center of mass of this planar lamina. And I just want to contrast, again, just terminology. First semester, we talked about centroids also. The centroid of a, a region is usually you assume that it's uh, a uniform density. Centroid is a property of the shape. Center of mass is a property of the shape along with this, how the density varies. So the center of mass can have to do with some properties of the material. So really what this does is give us, gives us another way to set up and evaluate double integrals, gives us another interpretation of this quantity inside, uh, inside a double integral. Doesn't have to be a volume. So I just want to look at an example of setting one of these up, and then we're going to talk about the second moment of mass. So any questions about our setup here? It's a pretty straightforward um, extension of what we've done with, the, with multiple integration. And this region, dA, we, we can do this, this integral we, if we need to. We can transform this to polar coordinates, just like we talked about last time. Sometimes that'll be beneficial. All right, so an example. We want to find the mass and center of mass of the planar lamina. and are bounded by y equals x to the third, y equals zero, y equals x squared, with rho equals some constant times x. So our, our density, our mass per unit area increases as x increases. We, we, oh, sorry, this is not y equals x squared. This is x equals 2. All right, so let's make a little sketch here. There's y equals x to the third. y equals 0 is, is, uh, is here, and here is x equals 2. So our region is in here. You could do your rectangles either way. I, I tend to choose vertical rectangles. So our mass is going to be the integral. This is going to be nice and easy for um, rectangular coordinates. x is going to go from 0 to 2. y is going to go from 0 to x to the third, and we get k x dy dx. Easy integral to evaluate. If we evaluate this, we get 32k over 5. Our moment about our x-axis, nothing else changes other than what we put into the integral. So we have the same region, 0 to 2, 0 to x to the third. And the distance from the x-axis is y times kx dy dx. Again, another easy integral to evaluate. Um, when I do this, I get 16k. And our moment about the y, nothing changes. Our region is the same, 0 to 2, 0 to x to the third. So once we set our, find our region for these, we use the same region for all of these. And now we're just going to put an x in there, kx dy dx. Another easy integral to evaluate, uh, and we get 32k over 3 for that one. 
And then our center of mass, x bar, y bar, would be 5 thirds and 5 halves. m sub y over the mass and m sub x over the mass. So setting up, setting up the integral really is, is the thing with our moments. Find your, find your, your region. All, your, all of this stays the same. A row, dy, dx, however you decide to set it up, that's going to be the same. You just plug different things in there. <coughs> so how, is this pro how would this problem be different if our, when we did it first, from when we did it first semester when our density was constant? Well, the density could change. What, how, how is that going to be different than what we would have gotten if the density was constant? It's going to move it. It's going to move it over because there's right. more mass. There's more mass toward, as, we, as x increases, so our, our center of mass is going to be further to the right than it would have been if the density was constant. All right, let's look at another moment that we can calculate. So m sub x, m sub y are moments of mass, first moments of mass, or the moment. Um, we call mo and again, moments are something weighted by, multiplied by its distance from an axis. We can talk about a second moment of mass, which is second moment of mass. The other name for this, the more common name for this, is moment of inertia. We call it the second moment of mass is because it is the mass times the distance squared. We square the distance of the mass, or the, the distance of the mass from the axis. So that's why we call it the second moment of mass. And it turns out, physicists discovered this um, empirically initially, that that corresponds to the moment of inertia of, of a thing. And the moment of inertia um, is the tendency of some mass to resist rotation. So the, the moment of inertia is similar to, um, similar to the mass if you're just talking about motion. Mass is the, the, the tendency of an object to, to, remo to, to um, resist change in position. The moment of inertia is the, the tendency of a mass to resist changes in rotation. And I, sh I should say change, not just. Uh, Can I put this in there? Sure, if you just want to set it there. It'd be great. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't do pi day yes, uh, on block day. Because they, they had more work to do. And it's easier, it's easier with a geometry class to do pi day on a shorter class period. I can keep a little more control over them then. Um, so our moment of inertia is a tendency of a mass to resist changes in rotation. We can follow the same line of reasoning that we did for the first moment of mass. All we're doing, all we're changing here is we're squaring the distance instead of using the first power of the distance. So I sub x is the double integral over our region of y squared rho of x, y, dA. This is our moment of inertia, or second moment of mass, about the x-axis. 
y is the distance from the x-axis. We square that. i sub y, double integral over our region of x squared, rho of x, y, dA. That's going to be about the y-axis. And we can also talk about a third moment, i sub x plus i sub y equals i sub 0. And that's going to be the integral, double integral over a region of x squared plus y squared, rho of x, y, dA. We can also call this the integral of r squared, rho of x, y, dA. This is the polar moment of inertia. Or the, mom the second moment about the z-axis. It's about the origin. Because we're thinking of a planar lamina. So we, instead of the z-axis, we think of the z-axis the just the origin. Yeah, but we, I, we, I say I sub zero. I get, you could say I sub O, I sub zero. Yeah, the origin is still zero, zero. The origin is still zero, zero. So this is our polar moment of inertia or the, the second moment about the z-axis. It's usually easier to calculate I sub x and I sub y and add them together than to calculate I sub x squared or calculate the double integral of x squared plus y squared. Just do them separately. All right, so nothing, no, not a big change. We're just squaring our distances. Yes. Do we have to put rho into the terms of polar? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just, just like before, if we did this in polar coordinates, we did express rho in terms of the polar coordinates. And just like we have a center of mass for our first moment, we have a similar quantity for our second moment called the radius of gyration. radius of gyration is our double bar. Oh, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Equals the square root of I over M. So what we're saying is X double bar, the co coordinate of our X double bar is the square root of I sub Y over the mass, and y double bar is the square root of i sub x over the mass. And what the radius of gyration tells us is if the entire mass um, not going to say is, were concentrated at our bar, or I'm going to say at a distance of our double bar from the axis of rotation. So if we consider, if we think about the entire mass being concentrated at that at the coordinate x double bar, y double bar, the radius of gyration, um, it would have the same moment of inertia as the entire system. about the same axis. So just like the center of mass, if you, if you have a, a planar lamina and you want to talk about how it, how it moves, how it accelerates, uh, all of that kind of thing, you can, you can assume that all the mass is concentrated at the center of mass. 
and all the all of your your um, dynamics equations work out the same. For the radius of gyration, if you consider all the mass concentrated at the radius of gyration, that's that mass is going to have the same moment of inertia as the entire system. So you can just think of a point mass located at the radius of gyration instead of dealing with the entire system. So it uh, it simplifies your work with a, with a planar lamina. You don't have to worry about the lamina, just consider the mass concentrated at the radius of gyration. So for a second moment, for moment of inertia, your problem would say find I sub X, I sub Y, and the radius of gyration. Just like problems would say find um, X, M sub X, M sub Y, and the center of mass. The radius of gyration is the analog to the center of mass for rotating things. Yes? So is R double bar X plus Y, or X, X double bar plus Y double bar, or X times? Because we don't have a value that's just I. Right. Um, our radius, the, so the radius would be the, the square root of X double bar squared plus Y double bar squared square root, the, that, that magnitude. The radius is like the, the distance. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that, that, so that, the R double bar refers to the distance from the axis, the, the, the distance from the axis. All right, so I just want to look at an example of setting up one of these problems. It's really the same as the last one. We're just in, integrating a different quantity. So I'm going to say here that rho equals 1, just to make our lives easier. And we want to find I sub X, I sub Y, X double bar, and Y double bar. So the coordinates of the, the radius of gyration. And here's our region. y equals minus h over bx plus h. Some line. Well, we need our mass. So what's our integral for our mass going to be? Zero to what is this? What's this coordinate going to be? When x when y equals zero. B. B. Okay. How about this one when x equals zero? H. Okay. Thank goodness. All right. So we're going to go if we do our ver rectangles vertically. This zero to x goes from 0 to b. b, y goes from 0 to negative h over bx plus h, dy dx. All right, nice, easy integral to evaluate. Uh, maybe not nice, easy algebra to do for some of us. Um, we get bh over 2. What is that? Base times height divided by 2? <laughs> One half base times height is the area. area. The density is constant. So the mass is going to be the area of the region. The density is constant. Good job. All right, I sub x <laughs> equals, our, our limits are the same, 0 to minus h over b x plus h. I sub x is going to be y squared dy dx. Not a difficult integral to evaluate. Um, might be some uh, difficult algebra when you have to cube this thing at the end. Um, 
And when we do that, we go through it. It's not terrible. Um, we get uh, B H to the third over twelve. You can do D X D Y, but then you have you solve this for X in terms of Y. Right. Yes, it wouldn't be that much better. Um, and I sub y is going to be the integral from 0 to b, uh, the integral from 0 to minus b over h x plus h x squared dy dx. Um, and I actually didn't calculate this one. This would be the setup. So. Um, Left as an exercise for, and when you get more into more advanced math text, you'll see that in in the in the book a lot. This is left as an exercise for the reader. Um, right. The proof the proof is left as an exercise, or they'll say left as an exercise, and then you get assigned that as a homework problem. Um, and we so if we calculate y bar, y double bar, is the square root of i sub x over m. So that would be the square root of b h to the third over 12 times 2 over b h. And I get h square root of 6 over 6. Similar calculations for um, x double bar and i sub y. Yes? So, and that would give you a, a pair of coordinates, like an x, y right. spot. Mm -hmm. That's when you would present your answer for your right. radius. Um, and for this one, for these kinds of problems, um, if you set up, I'm fine if you set up your integral, m, i sub x, i sub y, uh, and you say y bar, y double bar is going to be i sub x over m. And just leave it like that. x double bar is i sub y over m. So we don't even have to solve. You don't have, yeah, I'm not going to ask you to do all that. And often on, on some of these, on the test, I would say set up, uh, set up the integrals necessary to find these things and evaluate the integral for i sub x. So you're not evaluating all of, all of the integrals. Right, right. And it would specify whether we're supposed to evaluate or not. Yes. All right, questions. Planar lamina, center of mass, second moment of mass. Um, I do know, I, I don't remember what, what the measurement is. But there's there's some there's in in stats there's a third moment some some statistical quantity that's a third moment. Um, you you might want to bother Mr. Grace by asking him about the statistical quantity that's a third moment. All right. Quite a bit more. I can't remember. I'll look in just a second. It's a lot. That's fine. All right.